Hello, welcome to the session Postmodern Aesthetics. Before we deal with postmodernism, we need to understand what modernism is. The term modernism is widely used to denote the new and experimental features in the subjects, forms, concepts and styles of arts and literature in the first half of the 20th century. Modernism is important for unique styles that it developed. Imagism, Expressionism, Cubism, Futurism, Symbolism, etc. were part of modernism. The term postmodernism is very often applied to the art and literature after Second World War. The term was first used emphatically in the 1960s by critics such as Leslie Fiedler and Ihab Hassan for the change of sensibility that occurred during the period. Arnold Toynbee, the historian, became the first person to use the term outside specific artistic sense when he announced in the 1950s that we were entering the postmodern age. The term gained much acceptance in the 1970s to denote first architecture and later dance, theatre, painting, film and music. Richard Apitnaneshi and Chris Garrett pointed out uh, that the ambiguity of the term postmodern starts with its grammar, which literally means after, just now. Uh, the word aesthetic is derived from the Greek word meaning aesthetic or sensitive. The term was later adopted by Alexander Baumgartner, Swiss poet and writer on literature in 1734 to mean taste or sense of beauty. Aesthetics is a part of philosophy dealing with nature of art, beauty and taste with the creation and appreciation of beauty. Scientifically speaking, it is defined as the study of sensory and sensorial values. Scholars also define it as critical reflection on art, culture and nature. An important theoretician of postmodernism is Jean-Francois Lyotard. Lyotard was a French philosopher, sociologist, professor and literary theorist. He is known for his analysis of postmodernism in relation to human condition. He was asked by the Council of Universities of Quebec, Canada in the late 1970s to do a survey of the state of knowledge in the Western world. He came up with the definition for postmodernism as, I quote, incredulity to meta-narratives, unquote. David Harvey, the British Professor of Anthropology and Geography at City University of New York, in his book The Condition of Postmodernity, defines postmodernity as the situation after the collapse of Enlightenment project. Enlightenment, Harvey said, I quote, took it as axiomatic that there was only one possible answer to any question. Unquote. Richard Rorty is another theoretician of postmodernism. He also shared Leotard's skepticism towards enlightenment reason and metanarratives. Rorty makes sense out of contingency and fragmentariness of contemporary life by turning to language and aesthetic experience. Susan Sontag, considered to be one of the harbingers of postmodern trend with her essay Against Interpretation, it charts out the gradual transition from art of interpretation to art against interpretation or from modernism to postmodernism. By interpretation, Sontag means, I quote, a conscious act of mind which illustrates a certain chord certain rules of interpretation." Unquote. For her, interpretation does not always prevail. In fact, a great deal of today's art may be understood as motivated by a flight from interpretation. To avoid interpretation, art may become parody, or it may become abstract, or it may become merely decorative or it may become non-art. The flight from interpretation seems particularly a feature of modern painting. Abstract painting is the attempt to have, in the ordinary sense, no content. Since there is no content, there can be no interpretation. 
four part works by the opposite means to the same result using content so blatant. So, what it is? It too ends by being uninterpretable. Susan Sontag's analysis clearly shows her preference for high arts. Anyway, one of the important features of postmodern art is the bringing together of high and low culture through the use of industrial materials and pop culture imagery. While this fusing began in the modernist period, it became fully developed in the postmodern era. Leslie Fiedler prefers to promote a new personal stand towards culture. He hails new artists as the representatives of an apocalyptic future. He praises it as more black than white, preparing for a post-humanist, post-male, post-heroic world. Ehab Hassan on many occasions offered a table of features contrasting modernism and postmodernism, romanticism and symbolism versus pataphysics and dadaism, form versus anti-form, purpose versus play, design versus chance, hierarchy versus anarchy, presence versus absence, metaphor versus metonymy, readerly versus writerly, and determinacy versus indeterminacy, etc. Pluralism is an important concept in postmodernism. It doesn't make any differentiation between high art and low art. Leslie Fiedler, the American critic and thinker, wrote the essay, Cross the Border, Close the Gap, Postmodernism. The gap Fiedler was talking about was that of high art and low art. Fiedler hails the low bro, anti-rational, apocalyptic sensibility. In order to discover postmodernism, we have to seek the richness of meaning rather than its clarity. Charles Jenks in What is Postmodernism says that pluralism is the ism of our times and it is both a problem and an opportunity where every man becomes a cosmopolite and every woman a liberated individual. Confusion and anxiety became a state of mind and ersatz a common form of mass cultures. Akbar as Ahmed too suggests this aspect when he says postmodernist montage mixes the hybro and the populist, the alienation and the accessible. The taste for him is eclectic and the outlook decays. Postmodernism coexists with the age of media. Postmodern art could also be called as the art in the age of mass media. As Marshall McLuhan has said, the world has shrunk to a global village. Infotainment has become a key concept. Movements in postmodern art. The first one is conceptual art installation art, lowbrow art, performance art, digital art, intermedia and multimedia, appropriation art and neoclassical art, neo-expressionism and painting. Conceptual art. The term conceptual art was first used by Edward K. Knoll, American installation artist and sculptor in the late 1950s. It means a form of contemporary art which gives priority to an idea presented by visual means that are themselves secondary to the idea. This form of art may not have an inner face value but can deliver a powerful message and thus serve as a vehicle for socio-political comment. It also is a challenge to the tradition of a work of art as a crafted and unique object. Conceptual art is sometimes called as postmodern art because it is clearly involved in deconstructing what makes a work of art 
art. Conceptual art because it is often designed to confront, offend or attack notions held by many of the people who view it is regarded with particular controversy. Precursors to conceptual art include the work of Marcel Deja, the famous French artist. His ready-mates including snow shawls, bicycle wheels, bottle racks and most famously fountain are widely understood as having anticipated some of the major trends which became widespread in the 1960s. His mixed media installations incorporating previously functional objects established the principle that art could be about concepts and ideas even playful or ironic rather than mimetic and or formalist. Deschamps' work has been given postmodern status because he believed that the artist should decide what art was. Deja challenged the conventional ideas about art and aesthetic judgments. How we evaluate the art we see? Rosenberg's erased de Kooning drawing is an important work in the conceptual way. Many conceptual works take the position that art is created by the viewer viewing an object or act as art not from the intrinsic qualities of the work itself. This because fountain was exhibited it was a sculpture. It was just a urinal kept upside down. Installation art. Installation art which emerged in the 1970s is a postmodern art practiced by a large number of contemporary artists. It incorporates a range of two-dimensional and three-dimensional materials to influence the way we perceive a particular space. They are artistic inventions designed to make us rethink our lives and values. This visual art can vary from the very simple to the very complex. An installation can be gallery based, digital based, electronic based or web based. Marcel Deja can be considered as the originator of installation art too. An important series of movements in art which have consistently been described as postmodern involved installation art and creation of artifacts that is conceptual in nature. One example being the science of Jenny Holzer which uses the devices of art to convey specific messages such as protect me from what I want. Installation art has been important in determining the spaces selected for museums of contemporary art in order to be able to hold the large works which are composed of vast collages of manufactured and found objects. These installations and collages are often electrified with moving parts and lights. They are often designed to create environmental effects as Christo and Jean Claude's iron curtain wall of 240 oil barrels blocking Rue Visconti, Paris, June 1962, which was a poetic response to the Berlin Wall built in 1961. Famous modern artists are Joseph Boyce, Bruce Nauman, Damien Hurst and Tracy Emin. Lobro art. The word lobro is the opposite of highbro, which means concerned with serious or intellectually high art. Lobro art describes an underground visual art movement that arose in Los Angeles, California area in the 1960s. Lobro art is a widespread populist art movement with origins in the underground comics world, punk music, street culture and other California subcultures. It is often known by the name Pope Surrealism. Lobro art highlights a central theme in postmodernism 
in that the distinction between high and low are no longer recognized. Low bro art often has a sense of humor which is sometimes gleeful, sometimes impish and sometimes a sarcastic comment. Performance art. It is a major form of art movement in the 1960s and 70s. It takes as its medium the artist herself. It is difficult to define, but an important characteristic is the requirement of the artist to perform or express her or his art before live audience. To have the audience watch the artist construct an installation would be a good example of performance art. Digital art. Digital art is a general term for a range of artistic works and practices that use digital technology as an essential part of the creative and or presentation process. The impact of digital technology has transformed activities such as painting, drawing, sculpture and music, sound art, while new forms such as net art, digital installation art and virtual reality have become recognized as artistic practices. Intermedia and Multimedia Another trend in art which has been associated with the term postmodern is the use of a number of different media together. Intermedia, a term coined by Dick Higgins and uh, meant to convey new art forms along the lines of fluxes, concrete poetry, performance art and computer art. Higgins was a poet and an admirer of Marcel Deja. Ehab Hazen includes, I quote, intermedia, the fusion of forms, the confusion of realms, unquote, in his list of characteristics of postmodern art. One of the most common forms of multimedia art is the use of videotape and CRT monitors, termed video art. Appropriation art and neo-conceptual art. In his 1980 essay, the allegorical impulse toward a theory of postmodernism, Craig Owens identifies the re-emergence of an allegorical impulse as characteristic of postmodern art. This impulse can be seen in the appropriation art of artists such as Sherry Levine, Robert Longo, because allegorical imagery is appropriated imagery. Appropriation art debunks modernist notions of artistic genius and originality and is more ambivalent and contradictory than modern art, simultaneously installing and subverting ideologies, neo-expressionism and painting. Neo-expressionism refers to the last international contemporary art movement which emerged during the late 1970s and 1980s. They revitalized painting with strong colors as well as motifs drawn from mannerism, cubism, German expressionism, surrealism and pop art. The return to the traditional art forms of sculpture and painting in the late 1970s and early 1980s is seen in the work of neo-expressionist artists such as George Baselitz and Julian Schnabel has been described as postmodern tendency and one of the coherent movements to emerge in the postmodern era. Its strong links with the commercial art market has raised questions. However, both about its status as a postmodern movement and the definition of postmodernism itself. Hal Foster states that neo-expressionism favored the conservative cultural politics of the Reagan-Bush era in the US. The critics of neo-expressionism revealed that money and public relations 
really sustained contemporary art world credibility in America. Now, let us make a brief conclusion of postmodernism. It denotes the overall experimental tendencies in the western arts since the 1940s which rejected many of the modernist tendencies. Now, we have a few questions. Is postmodernism a continuation of modernism or a rejection of modernism? And the second question, what does Avanga mean? Here are some books for your reference. Richard Apignanesi and Chris Garrett, Postmodernism for Beginners, Duxford, UK, Icon, 1995. Frederick Jameson, Postmodernism or the Cultural Logic of Late Capitalism, London, Verso, 1991. Jean Francois Lyotta, The Postmodern Condition, translated by Geoffrey Bennington and Brian Masumi, Minneapolis, Manchester University Press, 1979. Thank you for watching this session. Hope you have got some ideas on postmodern aesthetics. We will discuss another topic in the next session. Till then, goodbye.